Hello, and thank you for taking the time to view this video. In August of 2018, Ohio implemented a complete ban on the importation of high-risk cervid carcasses and parts as part of our ongoing effort to minimize the risk of introducing chronic wasting disease, or CWD, into Ohio. The ban applies to all CWD susceptible species, including deer and elk. Recognizing that this created hardships for many Ohio residents that travel out of state each year, and that our concern was largely with proper disposal of the carcass upon returning to the state and not transport per se, it was decided that a suitable compromise would be to certify Ohio processors and taxidermists that were interested in handling out of state deer, elk, and other cervids. Certification is free, only needs to be done once, and only involves a short educational presentation followed by a very brief exam. This certification will allow you to accept complete deer, elk, and other CWD susceptible species carcasses, as well as high-risk parts from out of state, provided these materials are properly disposed of. Additionally, you will be able to accept deer from any disease surveillance area, or DSA, existing within the state of Ohio. If your business is outside the DSA, but depends heavily on deer from the DSA, you may want to consider certification. Here is a summary of the 2020 rule that created the certification process. Existing rules did not permit the importation of whole cervid carcasses or high-risk parts to help prevent the introduction of CWD. We felt this created unnecessary hardships for Ohio residents traveling out of state. Certification is voluntary. Those who do not elect to be certified cannot accept cervid carcasses or high-risk parts from out of state. This change allows cervid carcasses or carcass parts to be brought into the state or taken out of a DSA if those items are delivered to an authorized meat processor or taxidermist within 24 hours of entering the state. CWD is an always fatal neurological disease affecting members of the deer family. It is caused by misfolded prion proteins. These misfolded prions cause normal prion proteins to misfold. This sets off a chain reaction which ultimately creates holes in nervous system tissue, most notably the brain. There is no cure for infected animals. CWD is a TSE, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. This family of diseases includes scrapies in sheep, BSE or mad cow in cattle, crutchfeld jakobs disease, which is sporadic in humans, and variant crutchfeld jakobs disease, which was linked to the BSE outbreak in Great Britain. The CDC states that there is no strong evidence that CWD is transmissible to humans. However, it is recommended that hunters test their deer when in areas of known CWD occurrence and not to consume the meat of an animal that tests positive. Can you tell by looking at a deer that it has CWD? The answer is no. Let me explain. A deer with CWD can look as healthy as the deer on the right. A few days after being captured on trail camera, this buck was shot by a hunter in Wisconsin. The deer tested positive for CWD. Whitetails can carry CWD for at least 16 months before they show visible symptoms. During the incubation period, they may appear healthy but are still spreading the disease. As the disease progresses, animals stagger, carry their heads and ears lowered, drool excessively, and show little or no fear of humans. They will eventually lose body condition and appear weak and emaciated, such as the deer on the left. Where has CWD been found? It has been found in the United States, Canada, South Korea, Norway, Finland, and Sweden. This map shows the current distribution of CWD in the United States and Canada. The first confirmed case of CWD in a free-ranging deer in Ohio was a deer harvested by a hunter in Wyandotte County in the fall of 2020. Early in 2021, a second positive deer was harvested during a controlled hunt at Kildeer Plains Wildlife Area in Wyandotte County. In response to these detections, the Division of Wildlife designated a Disease Surveillance Area, or DSA, 
that established a number of rules for hunters hunting inside the DSA, including a ban on feeding and baiting, mandatory testing, and restrictions on movements of deer from the area. This is the current DSA, which is slightly larger than the original one. The following slides provide a summary of CWD positive deer through the 2023-2024 deer season. Here are the approximate locations of those first two positive wild deer. The following year, we had nine additional positives. In 2022, a total of 11 additional deer tested positive, bringing our statewide total to 22 deer. At this point, our positive deer were limited to Marion and Wyandotte counties. By the close of the 2023-24 deer season, we added an additional 27 positive deer, bringing our total to 49. It is also worth noting that two additional counties and several new townships were added in 2023. Now that you know where CWD exists and its status here in Ohio, it is important to know how it can spread. CWD spreads through direct animal-to-animal -animal contact or by contact with saliva, urine, feces, carcass parts of an infected animal, or contaminated materials in the environment, such as plants and soil. Prions released into the environment through bodily fluids or diseased carcasses are extremely resistant to degradation and can remain infectious for years. Prion concentrations are highest in these body parts of a cervid. Brain, eyes, spinal cord, lymph nodes, tonsils, and spleen. It is important to take precautions when handling these parts. Currently, it is illegal to bring high-risk carcass parts into Ohio from anywhere outside the state unless they are taken to a certified processor or taxidermist within 24 hours. It is also illegal to remove high-risk parts from a DSA unless they are taken to a certified processor or taxidermist within 24 hours of harvest. Hunters who hunt in a different state can bring the following cervid parts into Ohio. These are also the parts which may be moved from within a DSA to outside a DSA. Hunters can freely transport antlers, antlers attached to a skull cap from which all soft tissue has been removed, deboned meat, quarters or other portions of meat with no part of the spinal column or head attached, meat that is cut and securely wrapped either commercially or privately with no part of the spinal column or head attached, upper canine teeth from which all soft tissue has been removed, hides and capes without any part of the head or lymph nodes attached, finished taxidermy mounts, and soft body tissue wrapped and packaged for use by a diagnostic research laboratory. When handling cervids, there are some important precautions to take. Hunters, taxidermists, and meat processors should follow these steps to help decrease the risk of CWD exposure. Wear rubber gloves, debone meat from the animal, minimize handling of brain and spinal tissues, and disinfect cutting tools and surfaces with a 2% solution of bleach, which is one part household bleach to one and a half parts water. Soak items at least five minutes in the solution, then rinse completely with clean water. If you are sensitive to the odor of bleach, it is recommended that you disinfect your tools in a well-ventilated area or consider using an alternative disinfectant such as Vircon. Now that you have processed the animal, here are the proper ways to dispose of unwanted parts. Disposing of the remains of all harvested animals properly will reduce the chance of spreading CWD in our state. What not to do? Burning will not destroy prions. A treatment with bleach solution is only recommended for cleaning tools and equipment rather than a means of carcass disposal or decontamination of muscle tissue. Throwing or dumping a carcass or carcass parts out back in the field for scavengers will only contaminate the site if the animal was CWD positive. What to do? For disposal, use a trash company where the trash goes to a licensed municipal solid waste landfill which accepts animal carcasses. It is recommended to double bag high-risk parts. 
If you don't have a trash pickup service, dispose of the parts by taking them to a licensed municipal solid waste landfill which accepts animal carcasses. We ask that you do not burn or chemically treat any carcass or carcass parts as this will not destroy CWD prions. Because proper disposal is the most important part of the certification process, it is worth mentioning the following points once again. Certification requires that all deer from out of state and disease surveillance areas must be landfilled. If your business currently renders deer waste and you would like to be certified, you may be certified and continue to render your waste provided you agree to landfill all deer from DSAs and out of state. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. It is our responsibility as wildlife biologists, hunters, and those of us who process deer to do what we can to protect our herd. You may now take the test, which will fulfill the requirements for certification. A score of 80% is needed to pass the exam. The exam can be taken as many times as necessary to get a passing score, and a one-time certification is valid for a lifetime.